Hello, friends, and thank you for joining me in this ongoing study of the 12 apostles. These 12 were chosen, the study of the original 12. Uh, I'm Dave Layton, and again, thank you for being a part of this study. When, when I first introduced this series, I, I talked about how uh, these men give us lessons to learn, and that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a, a particular apostle and what we can learn from him in Scripture, but also then what they teach us as, as we, too, our disciples of our Lord. Now, there, there's an interesting thing that happens that, that as we go through Scripture and we look at these apostles, there seems to be less and less about some of them. And yet we continue to learn from these men. This is true of Andrew as well. Uh, we don't see a lot in Scripture about him, but there still are some things that we can learn from him. He's just a wonderful example for us to follow. A lot of people, as I said in the lesson in Peter, will identify with Peter, but it's interesting. I, I think we share more in common with Andrew than we might think we do. Have you ever encouraged someone with a smile? Uh, I, I like it when I'm teaching and, and I'm looking out over the audience and I'll see someone smiling or nodding their head. That's an encouragement to me. So have you ever encouraged someone with a smile or a kind word? Have you ever invited somebody to a Bible study, either one that you were teaching or somebody was teaching that you wanted this person to hear? Have you in, invited someone to, to hear a special speaker, maybe uh, at, at a congregation, uh, somebody speaking to you about the Lord? Have you ever uh, maybe picked somebody up uh, and carried them to services, provided transportation to them? Have you ever taken food to someone as an act of kindness that you knew they needed it and, and did so? Have you ever given someone a book to read or, or some information to read about our Savior? Well, these are just a few ways I think that we share a common characteristic of Andrew. Uh, we're doing, uh, we're using what we have. We're sharing the gift of our Savior. We're using the gifts that God has given us. We're sowing seeds of God's Word. And, and that's just what we see Andrew doing. E even though he's not a, a strong, prominent figure, uh, he still had a role to play. And that role was sharing Jesus as best he could, whenever he could. All right, well, during this presentation, as I said, we're going to look at some information and some observations about Andrew uh, in his relationship with our Lord, his relationship with his brother Peter. And then we're going to take a look at, at what we learned from Andrew. What, what can we take from his life and use in our life to, to enable us to be better servants for the Master? As with all the apostles, what we know from Andrew for certain is contained in Scripture. Uh, I suppose uh, what's important about him is found there because that's what God reveals to us about him. There are some other writings uh, not inspired that present traditional accounts of Andrew but we're gonna focus on what scripture says. So let's begin, first of all, by talking about some information and observation, starting with some information, some biblical information. We know that Andrew was the brother of Peter. Uh, Andrew is listed in all of the accounts of the apostles in that first grouping, that, that closest inner circle to Jesus. Uh, we know that Jesus was introduced to Andrew by John the Baptist in John chapter 1, verses 35 through 40. John points out Jesus. Uh, this apparently occurred uh, the day after Jesus' baptism when, when John points him out. John identifies Jesus as the Lamb of God. Uh, Andrew uh, left John, uh, followed Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry, John the Baptist. He, Andrew left John the Baptist and he began to follow Jesus. Jesus invites them to join him for the day. You know, just imagine the thrill of that event. You're, you're spending this, this period of time with Jesus Christ. Uh, you are having that personal audience with him. Uh, the, the wonder of discovery uh, as they listened to what Jesus was telling them. I, you know, we use the expression, you know, a fly on the wall. I, I, I would love to have been there just listening as Andrew was, asking questions, learning about Jesus, that, that personal audience that he had. Imagine the thrill of that. Uh, it, it's no wonder, really, that, that Andrew then immediately went to his brother. 
and he proclaimed to him, we have found the Messiah in John chapter 1, 41. We also see an incident occurred in John chapter 12, verse 22, where uh, uh, Andrew identifies two foreigners to Jesus, uh, two Greeks, as the text says. Uh, in John chapter 6, verse 8 and 9, uh, brought the boy with the barley loaves and fish to Jesus. We see the last mention of Andrew in Acts chapter 1, verse 13, with the listing of the apostles after Jesus' ascension. Although it's not mentioned specifically by name, uh, Andrew continued to be active uh, to guide early Christians to a greater faith. Uh, sometimes the apostles were referred to collectively. Andrew would have been a part of that group. And so although we're focusing on scriptural information on these apostles, and specifically in this case, Andrew, uh, there are some observations I think that we can make about them. Uh, so so let's, let's talk about that now. Let, let's look at some things that, uh, some observations I have about Andrew. These are just some personal observations, some, some things I take from Andrew. I look at Andrew's leadership style. I, I, he, he really was kind of the opposite of Peter. Peter had a more direct approach. Uh, Andrew was nonetheless influential, which of course is the definition of leadership, being able to influence others. Andrew was, seemed to be uh, someone who quietly guided others uh, to these opportunities to meet with Jesus, to, to learn about Jesus. I speculate that Andrew maybe adapted that role as he's growing up in the shadow of Peter. Uh, Peter just didn't become who Peter was. That was who Peter was all of his life. And so Andrew adapted his own style and his own personality. Um, by the way, there's no evidence that Andrew resented Peter's dominance, that there was any conflict between the two. In fact, you could argue very convincingly the opposite was true, that he cared and respected Peter very much. What's the first thing he did when, when uh, he left Jesus? He went and got Peter. We have found the Messiah. So he cared about Peter and wanted Peter to share in that with him. Andrew seemed to be pleased to do what he could with the gifts he had, supporting others to do likewise. Uh, of the disciples in the inner circle, uh, Andrew seems to be the most thoughtful. That, that's kind of, again, a speculation on my part. When you contrast it with the other three members of this, this first grouping, Peter, we know, uh, having been impetuous, rushing ahead, um, frequently saying the wrong thing at the wrong time or doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. James and John, well, how, what was their nickname that Jesus gave them? Sons of Thunder. So certainly uh, they had some reckless tendencies as well. Uh, Mark chapter 3, 17, we see that name applied to them. But when we read about Andrew and his actions, we, 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 he, he's noted for doing the right thing saying the right things. You, you don't see Jesus ever rebuking Andrew directly, maybe in some of the overhead uh, encouragements or rebukes that Jesus might apply to the apostles. Andrew would have been a part of that. But Andrew is not singled out by crisis. Well, you said the wrong thing there. You got that wrong. Uh, scripture never directly attaches any negative things directly to Andrew. Uh, Andrew, like all of the apostles, though, had weaknesses. He had doubts, but he remained faithful to Jesus. And because of that, he grew. So I, I want to take a few minutes now, and I want to spend some time talking about what is it that we learn from Andrew. Andrew understood the value of the individual. You know, Jesus came to save humanity. But each of us individually must establish that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We do that, of course, by believing who Jesus is and, and uh, repenting of our sins and, and repenting of our life and turning to follow Jesus and, and uh, then carrying through with baptism so that we become in Christ and then looking to live faithfully to the teachings of Jesus, God's plan for our salvation. And, and so we understand that, but Andrew teaches us the value of the individual. We see in Andrew, uh, when, when we look at John's narrative, 
uh, Andrew seems to always be bringing someone to Jesus, maybe directly himself or secondary to someone else. He brought Peter to Jesus. At the feeding of the 5,000 in John chapter 6, verse 9, he brings a boy with the loaves and fishes that Jesus uses uh, then to not only feed the masses, but to teach a very valuable lesson. I've already mentioned in uh, John chapter 12, verses 20 and 22, that he brought two foreigners to Christ. Uh, the, these two men had come to Philip, but rather than take Philip taking them directly to Jesus, Philip took them to Andrew. And then Andrew brought them to Jesus. I, I, I don't know why. Uh, why Philip didn't directly go to Jesus. Maybe, again, Andrew was part of that inner circle and perhaps Philip thought, I'll take them through to Andrew. We don't know. Uh, but again, we see Andrew had a role in bringing someone to Jesus. And that's why I say sometimes um, <clears throat> we may uh, identify a little more with Andrew than we think we should. A lot of times we might not ourselves directly teach someone about Jesus in a, in a kind of a formal class or something of that type. Uh, we may not feel we're prepared to do that, but we can bring them to someone else who can. And so that's what we see there. Uh, Andrew never seems confused about what to do with someone. He simply brings them to Christ. And that is such a great lesson for us. Uh, that should be our view as well. How can I introduce this person to Jesus? How can I help this person establish that relationship with Jesus that is required for their salvation? And all of us should be an example. That's a common denominator, uh, living pure lives, being an example of Christ. But sooner or later, we, we, we need to speak up. And if we're not able to do that yet, we can bring them to someone else who can. That's what Andrew was doing so many of the times. So Andrew understood the value of the individual. He recognized that a person is a soul who needs to be saved, needs to come to the master. A second one is the value of personal contact. Personal contact, of course, is, is truly the strongest form of evangelism. Rarely is someone converted for, for just hearing a, a, a good sermon, a great sermon. Uh, rarely does that actually uh, by itself convert someone. Usually, someone's invited the person to come and hear a speaker. Uh, there, there, are some sort of, uh, there is some sort of personal relationship between the person. Uh, maybe it's even a follow-up of a personal study and contact. Uh, sometimes a person may not even have attended what we would call church uh, until they have been converted through a personal relationship with someone. You know, Andrew was someone's link in the chain, uh, this, this chain of events that led to their conversion. Uh, I once heard a great sermon using that as an illustration. Uh, the, the speaker was talking about each of us are a link in the chain to someone's salvation. And someone was a link in the chain for our salvation. And, and it's such a powerful thought to have. And so Andrew, was a link in the chain to someone coming to Christ. You know what? Andrew might, if you trace that chain all the way back, Andrew might have been a link in the chain to you coming to Christ. And so we learn we need to be a link in the chain to showing someone else Jesus Christ. A third thing that we learn from Andrew, Andrew shows us the value of simple gifts. Uh, we might think uh, we, we just have little to offer God. I'm, I'm me. At best, I'm a one servant or one talent servant. Uh, you know, uh, we, we might think that, but uh, truly, we, we are not allowing God to work in our lives as strongly as He could if we, if we continue that. See, that's our perception. I'm just me, I can't do much. And, and maybe we are limited in our knowledge and abilities in reality. But the true reality is that God has graced each one of us with what we need to be a servant to Him. 
So whether you're a one or a two or a five or ever how many talents or skills and knowledge you might have, we need to use them for the Lord. Andrew teaches that, especially the value of simple gifts. Can you tell someone about Jesus? You can tell someone about what Jesus has done in your life. And if you feel that I just can't do that, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about that, I don't have it completely in my mind, I'm still learning so much and I don't have the confidence, you can take them to someone who can. And so simple gifts, when we turn them over to the Lord, God takes those simple gifts and compounds them and builds upon it. Again, links in the chain. Never underestimate what God can do with what we have. Uh, that's just something I learned from Andrew. Andrew, the, the value of the individual, the value of personal contact, the value of simple gifts. Let me talk a little bit here in conclusion. Uh, you, you may feel you can't do much or you don't have much to work with. That's the farthest thing from the truth. We all have gifts, we all have talents, and we can use those to bring others to Christ, just like our brother Andrew did. Andrew was the brother of Peter. Uh, Peter was outspoken and, and very dominant and very uh, much out in front of things. Andrew, on the other hand, was not, but he was still there. He was still active. He took what he could use and turned it over to the master for our Lord's use. And, and uh, the, through his example, uh, we see that we too can use our gifts to become all that Jesus wants us to become. Again, it's about sowing seed. It's not about us. We're the servant. He's the master. So we use what we have to serve the master. There's an old song out there, an old gospel song that's called Balm of Gilead. I think Andrew would have loved that song. I think Andrew would have uh, especially enjoyed the second verse of that song. The second verse says, If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. Yes, Andrew offers us a lot. He, he's not the outgoing prominent figure that so many are, but he was still a strong figure still teaches us valuable lessons. We need a lot of Andrews today. Well, this concludes our lesson on Andrew. And in our next study, we're gonna look at the Sons of Thunder, the other two individuals that were part of that inner circle, that first tier of apostles. We're gonna look at James and John. Well, friends, again, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attention to this lesson. And remember, like Andrew would have said in all things, we give God the glory. Again, thank you.